And what about meditation? Meditation is evil. <laughs> When you sit for meditation, when you sit for meditation, you know that. You see, what you uh, have to say is more important than all the other books. You see, or all the other teachers. When you sit for meditation, what happens? The evil thoughts come there first. And <laughs> so yes, there's that mind going on. It's a battle, war going on there. Yes. It's between good thoughts, bad thoughts. Good thoughts, evil thoughts. There's a battle war. Yes. And then you see the peace you have after the war is war weariness. <laughs> <laughs> and you call that peace, huh? peace of mind. It's, it's a joke. You don't know any, you don't have any idea of uh, silence. You see, you think mm. that it's a silent mind and a peaceful mind. Try silence, that. the silence that is there in that living organism can be compared only to an erupting volcano. You see, the other day, uh, one psychiatrist was with me there in Mill Valley. You see, he was telling something. You see, the silence is not that dull, stupid, idiotic state of mind you put yourself into and believe that you are that you are experiencing the experience of a silent mind. So when silence is there, it is something like, you see, the, the roar of an ocean, the blood flowing through your veins, and the beat, heart beat, you see, you cannot, cannot listen to that at all. And there are so many people who are working in the soundproof laboratories, the scientists, mm -hmm. to work on certain scientific uh, experiments. Most of them, if not all of them, have gone crazy. Because they have to listen to what is going on there inside your body. It's like the roar of an ocean. See, the silence you experience as a result of this war between two things, which you call meditation, is something you can't imagine. See, this piece, you know, you can take a drug and put yourself in sleep. It's a lot easier. Why waste uh, hours and hours and hours uh, meditating on what? What do you meditate on? You don't have to go. You don't have to meditate to this mind. You don't have to go to that extent of torturing yourself to put yourself in a peaceful state. The peace is already there. What you are doing is destroying the peace that is already there. Mm. It's a very peaceful organism. Mm. It is not interested in your spiritual experiences at all. Mm -hmm. You know that is the fight. Mm -hmm. Anything you experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the mind. Through, you know, the mind that just... Mind, yes. It, Hopefully it is a myth. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's caused all this stuff in the yeah, world. That one. Books like that. Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you are still here. <laughs> I get telephone calls from different people. I have an answering machine. If you want to see me because you have read my book, Mm -hmm. You don't have to come to see me. Book has not done its job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. do, you, do you live someplace? I uh, now I am here at this moment. Next moment I will go somewhere else. Let's see. I don't have any place. Uh, I'm a vagabond. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so a man with no fixed abode. Carl Agge has a no, no. No country, no country, no peace. No tangible means of life. <laughs> Are you, you're a sadhu. <coughs> That's a high sound. Yeah. So, yeah. Could you tell us a little about your history? Uh, My history is all there. It's all here. I'm yes. So I don't want to repeat that uh, again, the story right. of my life. Right. Now I'm interested in telling people but don't read that book. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll never get your history. One way or the other. It's a sure way to get them to read it. Though, <laughs> it happened last time. You see, I bought a very expensive answer machine and left a message that I don't want to see Krishnamurti's widows. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't want to see Rajanish divorces. I don't want to see any religious books, religious books of all shapes, sizes, and colors. <laughs> <laughs> and there were more people knocking on my door because of that message. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sales technique. Are you no, good enough for this camera? You know? <laughs>
True. <laughs> I have only small room, one third the size of this room. So only five people, six people can sit there. So I'm safe that way. Really, I don't know what is there in that book. Honest to God. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know where I saved. <laughs> She told me that your restaurant has the photos of all sages, saints, and saviors. I wish you, I wish you would come in because he sounds exactly like Peyton. He said, "Don't tell me about any of your dumb gurus and all that stuff. And I don't <laughs> yeah. want to hear it." And he just does his daily, you know, life. I wish you would come in. You two would have had a lot in common. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, like but it is a natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. We serve some chicken. Yes. Serve some chicken is all right. But and, it is uh, a natural yeah. food, organically grown food. The well, mention of it makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Peyton said. Don't tell me about your organic food. I don't want to say. I've answered more questions on food. <laughs> Television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a statement to the effect that one lettuce leaf is enough, you see. That will take care of our vitamin needs. We get all these Not fanatics. for one year, but for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> we get all of these fanatic people that, you know, vegetarians and everything. So Peyton eats steak <laughs> to balance it. Smokes too, doesn't he? Smokes yeah, my, and drinks coffee. No, I, I like uh, soup made from the newborn babies. <laughs> <laughs> Friends? Oh dear, that sounds like me. <laughs> well, my time. friends are running out of newborn baby stunts. <laughs> yeah, that my daughter called me up a you know a few years ago and said she was pregnant and I said oh, no. Nobody understands. Yeah. One thing that scared me is the the huge photo you have of Jay Krishnamurti, she said. Oh, oh, just a little. Oh, did you see the, the angel? See. We have a big angel. Oh, angels, I don't mind. <laughs> 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 but I must say that Peyton has liked Krishnamurti, I have to tell you. Yeah. 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 There you go. It's too high. I know. You are too high. You are very serious. You frighten me. Really serious? Serious people frighten me. Yeah. No, no. You are a serious person. What? How frivolous I am. Very frivolous. No, well, you have serious questions, get frivolous answers. Serious questions get no answers because there are no serious questions at all. Mm. Nothing is serious, huh? Mm. <laughs> there it is. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she has a question. She has a oh, It's too serious. <laughs> it's too serious. <laughs> well, man, if you're laughing oh, so much, it couldn't be so serious. Why do you always have questions? I don't have any questions. Something because uh, you read too many books. Not only self, I don't read people. that many books. I really do. Um, gee, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> I was going to ask. You are you. not recording all of this. Oh yes, <laughs> still going. I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> well, what what do you say of death? Daily death. Dying Where daily. Where did you pick up that? Just from living. You're not joking, are you? Well, no, I'm talking about death. There is no such thing as death at all for that body. Now, what does that mean? I don't understand. Hmm? I don't understand what you mean when you because say that. Because this physical organism has no way of knowing that it is born, that it is alive, that it is awake. You see, it has no way of experiencing the fact that you are alive. Hmm? You get what I'm saying? So when you are dead, put quote and unquote that word dead. It's, it's a condition of the body you describe as a dead body. See, those who are alive, those who think that that body is not responding to the stimuli as the way 
it does when you think you are alive or uh, not functioning the way you think a living body is functioning. So you describe that condition of the body as a dead body. Hmm? But the body has no way of experiencing its own death. And those who are uh, watching that, see, involved with the death of you, are related to that, see, the dead person, also cannot experience death. It is not the death that you experience, the death of a, a near and dear one, see, or your people, but the void created by the disappearance of that individual and the impossibility of having the same kind of relationship with that individual you think you had before the death. Hmm? So, you have no way of experiencing death at all. For all practical purposes, the death does not exist. What, what is all this astral projection and all the, the near-death experiences and the channeling and the out-of-body experiences and all the people, everybody's channeling. Out of body experience. What is all that? Out of body experience. Is it just consciousness? Listen, listen to me. Out, if you are really interested in experience. No, I, I'm. Out, it's very simple. Out of body experience. <laughs> what you have to do is to increase your blood pressure. Any means, through meditations, through techniques uh, of uh, yoga, anything you do to increase the blood pressure, level of your blood pressure. You will fly, you will go out of your body and experience the what you call the out-of-body experiences. They are worthless. Well, now, is it conscious? Is it actually out of the body or is consciousness never in the body? There is no consciousness even now. I am questioning the consciousness itself. So what you have to say is important. What the books say, what the spiritual teachers say mm -hmm. is of no importance to us at all. You tell me. What you mean by consciousness? You well, see, don't quote any books to right. me. Right. Okay. Are you conscious now? Now, in relationship with what is going on there at this moment, I want you to tell me something about what you call consciousness. Don't quote anybody. Well, the only thing. Now you are thinking. You are not. You are well, thinking. I was going to say sight. Uh, sight does not tell you anything. That's true. Anything. The translation of the sensory activity uh, through the help of your memory, which is knowledge, that is all that you know. You don't know a thing. Well, Yuji, it tells me where the, the chair is. I can reach and no, grab it. So no. Without knowledge, you have no way of experiencing the reality of anything. I guess what I'm saying is if I close my eyes, I'm not too sure where to grab it for the, the chair. The memory is still there. You are carrying You see, what they, the physiologists have been telling us for ages is bullshit, you see. Because the moment the eyes are closed, there is no image left there. What you think is the image is the imagination you have of that, you see. That's all. Otherwise, it is not looking at anything. See, the moment you turn this side, Everything there is wiped out. The eyes are looking at that. You see, there is no body who is looking at things. There is no seer there. There is only physical seeing. Physical seeing does not tell you that, you see, you are a man. That's a chair. Huh? That's a woman. That's a lamb. Hmm? First we make up. No, you translate those yes. sensations. Hmm? within the framework <coughs> of your memory and tell yourself that that is, you say, lamb, that you are a man, that you are not a donkey or a monkey. That's a chair, not chair. You see, there is the sensory perceptions cannot experience anything without the help of the knowledge that is given to us. What about if things that happen that aren't connected with knowledge? Say, for example, if you're in nature and there's a connection with it, it, it feels there is, like there's there a connection no, there with the no whole. Connection, there is no connection with the nature there at all because you have already separated yourself from nature. Well, what if you're there and there well, is don't a one? Say what if, forget about its buts and ends. You see, you know. 
Well, what's oneness? What is that experience of oneness? Spiritually or what, what actually is or otherwise, it? Otherwise, When it or happens, what actually listen, is it? Is it memory it is, in the mind of you man? You are sitting in that, what is that sofa or whatever you want to call it. Is there separateness there? Are you separate from or different from? Huh? The sofa you are sitting in, what is it that tells you? It's the knowledge. Hmm? There is oneness here already. What is the oneness you are talking about? Oneness with nature, oneness with mm. Brahman, oneness with God, oneness with the truth, oneness with reality. Mm. Hmm? What is the oneness you are talking about? There is already oneness. It's all single. Mm. One unit, single unit. And what is it that separates you from that and creates that individual? It is the knowledge that creates the individual. The knowledge I am referring to is not something mysterious. The knowledge that you are a woman, that's a sofa, you are sitting, that, that's the knowledge I am talking about. Well, the body is female. Huh? Who ah. says that? Right. <laughs> if you accept that it is not, you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, but the life, I mean, the mind isn't male or female, is it? I don't think so. Mind is worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, the life isn't male, but it appears in most of us. Oh, that's, that's one bit. No, I, I, that's really great. What you I have to say <clears throat> is more important than what all the others have said so far. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to say. Sorry, I don't have any thought which I can call my own. Period, full stop, full period. You seem to have many things. They are not yours. Mm -hmm. huh? I agree. The individual does not exist. The individual is created by that. The totality mm -hmm. of knowledge, your culture, your society. Well, for what? its own reasons. Well, what? It's so strange because the body goes through these physiological changes and it affects the emotional system. No, it, the other what way is it? Well, the and then it around. creates this individual who reacts. No, it's the other way around. The emotions that disturb the the body there. What what is the instigation for the disturbance? Hmm? Well, why you are wanting something? It doesn't matter what you want. I'm not saying that you should be without wants. Anything you want, you begin to think, and. To get what you want, hmm? you have to think. And you cannot think without the help of those jokers who dished out all this nonsense. You see, con men. Then what is living in this culture? Are you you are fighting all the time with the culture, that's your problem. That's right. Huh? So the value you... system created by your society <clears throat> is responsible for your misery. <clears throat> hmm? I totally agree with that. So what do you do? Run away. That's what I want to know. Go oh, run away. Revolt against that. Where will you go? If you are that product of the culture. Not we are the world, not that song I am talking about. You see, you are the world, not that fancy stuff. There is no you other than what you are taught. To tell yourself that you are living, that you are a woman, as you said, it is not possible without that knowledge. It is not out there. The separation you are talking about is already taking place there. Not that mysterious oneness of life, oneness of one, become one with God, one with Brahman. With this, you see, it's, there is a division there, you see. The division that tells you that you are not happy, that's the division. That you are bored, hmm? that's the division. Division from whatever is happening there, any sensation that is there, you separate yourself from that and tell yourself hmm? that you are bored, that you are miserable, that you are not happy that you are not this, that and the other, that you want to be that, this and the other. You know my English is bad. As long as uh, 
I communicate something. Give you feel about it. No communication mm -hmm. is possible. Because you are all the time communicating to yourself. The communication is not the mysterious one telling yourself that I am this, that I am not that. But it's inside, the so called inside. You are looking at the things out there and telling yourself that that's a child, that's a man, that's beautiful, the wonderful sunset, wonderful sunrise. You are telling yourself all the time. Hmm? That is the division that you are talking about, you see. If there is no division, you will never look at the sunset and tell that's the most wonderful thing and write a poem about. And there must be a division there. The division is the knowledge you have. If you say something is beautiful, you have already created a division there. Hmm? So oneness is gone. So there is no such thing as beauty at all. Beauty is a frame. <coughs> you capture that in that frame and say it's beautiful. Sorry. Is division something bad, sir? No. The, the, what is bad about it is, I don't like to use that word bad. Uh, what's the word? You have me here. You are full of those words. Sorry. He can, <laughs> I'm not full of those words. He's a professor. He's a professor of English. <laughs> <laughs> he can cast the puck to him. He's the word. Full of words. But that's how we grew up. The, the demand to maintain that continuity. The demand to maintain that communication within yourself huh, is the one that is exhausting you. Since that's a repetitive process, there is nothing marvelous about telling yourself all the time that you are this, you are not that. That is this, that is not that. You see, that is the one, is the energy, it is consuming tremendous amount of energy. If you Put on that another thing, you see, enlightenment, God knows what, whatever you want. It's your demand for permanent happiness. But without the division, there is no enjoyment of life either. No, you see, that is it. What you see, the demand for permanent pleasure is the cause of your misery. See, it's, it's, a, it's a problem for this body. Any sensation of pleasure has a limited life of its own or happiness, you see. So the moment you separate yourself, there is a demand that it should last longer than its natural duration of life. That's the battle there. This is not interested in that movement of pleasure or demand for permanent happiness. Cannot take it. It destroys the sensitivity of this body. It has to function always in a sensitive way for the survival of this body. That's all it is interested in. It is not interested in your spiritual experiences. It is not interested in your permanent happiness. It is not interested in your permanent pleasure at all. You know, it is that that is destroying the sensitivity of the body. And the sensitive activity is colored by all that demand. So you don't look at anything. You have never looked at anything in your entire life. To look at this, you see, Without the help of that knowledge, <coughs> it's a very dangerous thing, you know. Why, you never Why is it dangerous? What's the danger? But you see, you, the only way you can look at it is only through the help of the knowledge you have. You can sit in front of a flower and uh, tell yourself that. You see, the observer is the observed. Yeah, it's beautiful, wonderful, you see. But if you relate that to your functioning in life, it's dangerous. It destroys everything. Because you can't drive your car then? Is that what the car is a mechanical thing. See, you don't, the moment What's you the start... Danger? Huh? What's the danger? The danger is that you see the observer is the observer, for example. You are about to make love to your man or girl, as the case may be. Observer is the observer. What happens? Where is the separation? Where is love making? It's all right to sit in the flower. You can't can enjoy your food then? No. Then why all this spirituality? That's, that is why I say when you are, if you are interested in varieties of food, there is nothing wrong with having varieties of girls or the other men. Society may not. 
acts as that. You see, there are certain actions of which the society uh, cannot accept. You see, you know, certain actions of yours are not socially acceptable. That is why you see the society condemns your actions. It is interested in status quo. You may rebel against to that and become a rebel, but still it is part of that. You are still interested in that. So you are involved with the society. Either you want to sorry, either you want to fit yourself into that framework or rebel rebel against that framework, but still you are involved with that system. It's values. a livelihood. The, yeah. the reason one stays involved is the livelihood. You have to eat. That is simple. Livelihood is not a, a big problem. Well, you can live on a sawdust with uh, glue thrown. <laughs> I guarantee that. You know, I was talking something like this. <laughs> some practical bird. Some, some, <laughs> some, some top nutritionist said, UG is saying absolute rubbish. You, say, you should not bastard, I said this. You know, all, all those nutritionists on site and at site. And he got furious. And there was one Russian woman who lived through the Leningrad seas for four years. You know? She survived not exactly on sawdust, but worse than that, you see. And and ever since she came to America, you see, she's now fat as a pig, and you see, she eats all the nutritious, healthful stuff. That is why she's miserable. <laughs> this body can survive on anything. It isn't just uh, food and uh, this survival we want from society. We want goodies like goodies. Yes, that's all right. Nothing wrong. Why are you condemning? Why these ethical codes well, of Well, comfort. Is comfort a pleasure where you're not cold and sick? That is simple. The animals know how to... Well, see the humans. Ah, you are not. You are not better than a dog. I'm sorry, not you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, totally <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. The, the dogs, the animals, dogs, cats... They're much smarter. And horses, if you have a look at them, they are totally... Aware, you see, total <laughs> choiceless aware, they all just look at you. It's a, far, it's a lot easier to have a one way seminar with a dog <laughs> than with your loud ones. The problem with dogs and cats is they can't change anything. We can change. But we have not succeeded, you see, changing anything. Change is always for the worse. We, we are meant to believe that it is for the better. It looks like we could use our mechanisms of thought to change the whatever seems to be problematic into something. Yeah, but along with problem. it, we create problems, don't we? Yeah. So we are caught up in this. You, you know? got to pay a price? Oh, we have to pay the price. It's weak. Okay. We don't count at all, you see. We can pay the price, but the whole of life on this planet is involved, you see. You know? you pay how price. much of it is, has benefited uh, the vast... Uh, Majority of these people on this planet. Progress no. has its price. Progress, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, progress uh, not something that we can be proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, if people <coughs> ask me why you use all these uh, <coughs> more, uh, automobiles, planes, you see, that's the mode of transportation that is available. I don't know, you also lived in Vijayawada. Vijayawada at least had electricity earlier than we did in Budiwada. We used these calcium uh, lamps and uh, mm -hmm. used bullock cart. I'm not suggesting for a moment that we should put the clock back and go back to the days of uh, uh, holistic uh, technology. Oh, <laughs> 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 no, oh no! <laughs> 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 I a million dollars the jackpot, right? Yes, <laughs> yes a serious man. Yeah. Um, you say there is separation and there is this demand and all those things because we believe that we are an individual. Yes. Why do I believe that I am an individual? Why do I have this belief? Because this is the, the, the cause of it's the very, problem. It's very simple. That culture has turned us all into neurotic individuals. <laughs> that psychosis is absolutely essential to survive in this culture of ours. There is no other way. He's saying to work with each other, to play with each other, to exist together. Yes, exist we together. have to pretend we have. that we're... Individuals. If you push yourself for any reason, especially in the spiritual direction, religious stuff, you become more neurotic, you see. And then if you push yourself further, you become manic depressive individual. 
Thank God you have to let him. Everybody in any culture believes that he is an individual. Exactly. That's all. So why, why is that so? Why, why is it that people believe? That That's why I said they are neurotic people. You see, they is it is it that they believe that they are an individual and, and as a result not they are neurotic? Not an individual. Actually, you are not an individual. Okay, that's my problem. Yes, you are not an individual. We are made to believe that we are individuals. Right. What is it that makes me believe? This that? this division, you see, that you are an individual and you must become an individual. That's the whole emphasis of culture, is to turn you into an individual. But actually, we are not individuals, you see. We have to depend upon that. Just the way we need air to breathe and survive, to experience yourself as an entity, you have to depend upon the knowledge that is given to us. True. You see. And at the same time that it is false because it says, you see, that you are an individual, actually you are not. Mm -hmm. So that is the conflict, the neurotic situation that we are functioning. That kind of a neurosis is absolutely essential to survive in this world. There is no other way. That's why we are educated. You see, education is very essential, you see. Not necessarily to give you a tool, you see. You know, I can be a carpenter, I can be a mason, I can be anything, you see, to before, survive in this world. Before we are given a model to imitate, we don't have a consciousness of it. I, you see, I don't know why, when, this uh, self-consciousness occurred in the human species, you see. So that was the day when that laid the foundation for complete total destruction of every form of life. It may, it may have, I don't know, now they say 15 uh, billion years of the universe. Now they are going to find out. They sent something there and they want to know. But animals are self-conscious too. Not in the sense in which we, we, we are self-conscious. So the, because our self-consciousness requires some, an image of something which... Uh, continuity. A continuity yes. and something against we, which we measure ourselves. Yes, we measure ourselves. We have... Uh, which see, measurements, have. you see, but we forget that measurements are arbitrary. All measurements are arbitrary, but we have to accept them for purposes of functioning. They are functional, functioning in this world sanely and intelligently. So this sense of separation, this sense of the individual and self-consciousness are all related. All related. They are they one are, variation. The same phenomenon. Of the same thing. So if you have self-consciousness... What is wrong, what is false about that is this demand for the integration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The unity is that there. So somehow this division should be bridged. Should so. be bridged. That Which is itself born out of the division. Out that of the not, division. It is the one that has created... False. Yeah. The beyond. That's See, why it's possible. That it's is why. Out of that division. No, you're, no, it is not possible. So, if you want, you see, to be very effective in this world, you have to be a manic depressive individual. You see, <laughs> all creativity is born out of. You see, the, you, to be an actress, to be a musician, to be a painter, to be uh, anything, you see, creative, you have to uh, to be a manic depressive individual. You, see, you don't have. Uh, <laughs> Why you? <laughs> <laughs> the best poetry always comes when I'm feeling ridiculously exactly, horrible. Exactly. I've lost a girlfriend of love or something. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we are not decorous enough, decent enough to admit that. <laughs> so, but if you enter the area of a clinical problem, then we are in trouble. Yeah, we all know that artists are neurotic people. But let's talk about. Healthy we, people. We are, <laughs> what makes you think that we are healthy? <laughs> well, okay. Let's go into the norm. Let's go into that. What do you want? Don't think. To live forever. <laughs> That's the, That's you exactly hit right. the nail on the exactly you exactly want right. for permanence. You said it right. That's you said correct. it right. That's the greatest well, profound well, statement. That's correct. And you ain't got a chance. <laughs> How do you explain to people who have all these channeling experiences of other disembodied spirits? And Why should they choose these individuals to communicate? I have a friend there who's sent a message to me, God is frightened of talking to you. <laughs> so he has asked me to give you this piece of advice. 
<laughs> that you are not taking care of your body. You should talk to the atheists. And, uh, <laughs> they will tell us. They were friends uh, who we were visiting a couple of days ago. The atheists were. Yes, 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 yes. I, I knew his father very well. He was my teacher. <laughs> the question is what is going on in the mind and memory when people, like I've even Don't had experiences with people who are. Forget saying, about others. You can give the I, okay, I myself. You, are, you know, listen. You are mechanically repeating what is put in there. You are just a computer. Nothing there. Sorry. You are repeating what is put in there. Well, Mechanical, there is nobody who is talking there. You, you just slow down. And, you know. I see what you're yes. saying. It's just the brain memory. Just, no, don't don't use anything. It's, it's brain memory. Nothing. You see, mechanically, these are two robot automatic, two tape regards. <coughs> Not even a computer. Computer has some intelligence. <laughs> But what about these individuals Forget who about talk them. to you? What about them? What you have the answer? Who tell them. you something? What is that? Just the mind creating huh? this? They, they are conning you into the belief that they are the channels. They actually are there, though. Who? <laughs> Shakespeare. Why should Shakespeare? Why should Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You have no way of testing whether that was the voice or that is the voice of Shakespeare. Yeah, you just have no way of, you see, that's the, ultimately it all boils down to you have no way of just checking. Checking, you see, if it is Shakespeare's voice, you know, then you, uh, you have no way of finding out whether it was Shakespeare or this woman uh, imagining herself. You can imagine yourself to be anything. Right? Even if it is all true, it doesn't make any difference. You know, you is know, it I, in the brain memory that, we pro that those don't, things don't are projected? Don't go into the anatomy of all that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why? Why? Well, oh well. This, this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have never God. been uh, so famous. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last one. The last gathering. I can afford to be The last one was the last one. <laughs> the chosen ones. <laughs> now, lately I am talking only to the unseen folk. <laughs> <laughs> and two cameras, three cameras <laughs> in front of me. You get more response to this. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about past lives? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? What do you think was your previous life? I have no idea. I grew up in an atmosphere. I'm never tired of repeating this one. And uh, that was the days of J. Krishnamurti when he was proclaimed as the world teacher and put on the world stage as a fire. At that time they published the, I don't know how many hundreds of lives of his past lives. Mm -hmm. Only 12 of them have been published in book form. That's interesting, you see. And the people living there, when they met first time, you see, the, you know how they greeted? You see, I am Paul, what is yours? You know, I am Catherine, what is yours? That's the way you introduce yourself, to get the name of the other person. I was Queen Victoria in my previous life, what were you? <laughs> I am not joking. I am not joking. <laughs> I grew up in that atmosphere, apart from the fact that all Indians believe in reincarnation. This was something more. <laughs> more specific. <laughs> so nothing was left for me. I was wondering what I was in my previous life. <laughs> and I went to the, the clay wine to who picked up this Krishnamurti and put him on the world stage. They were always looking at him, sitting in let front there. of him as a little boy, like this. I need this one. No, let me tell you. He doesn't know a damn thing about my past or goodbye. You see, all these claims of playboy and such bosh and nonsense. I said to myself. He had nothing to tell you? Yeah. He, he didn't see anything great in me. <laughs> <laughs> so he said nothing. That's nothing. interesting. <laughs> oh, well. So then I... <laughs> concluded that I didn't have any worthwhile. That's wonderful. Worth mentioning, worth talking about, worth remembering my previous life. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is there now? Now at this moment, find out now, and uh, tell me. 
about reincarnation. What do you think will reincarnate? There must be something there. Now, how can you find out by yourself and for yourself if there is anything as such as reincarnation? You have to die now. That's a dangerous question. You haven't even started living. Why are you concerned about it? next to life? Reincarnation. I want to know. You are not living. You are already dead. If you are concerned about what will happen if you are dead, you can't live. So if you want to find out for yourself and by yourself, just find out what is there now. No matter what you say about reincarnation, what anybody says has no meaning. You know? I don't know, we put it on record. I have a landlord who belongs to the yeah. Christian Club in Switzerland. One day I was standing out, he came running. Did you I believe in reincarnation? Do you believe in reincarnation? He asked me. I said, my standard answer is to such questions. There is reincarnation for those who believe in it. There is no reincarnation for those who do not believe in it. If there is any such thing as reincarnation, like the loss of gravity in this world, I don't think there is any. But anyway, you believe in reincarnation, I believe in reincarnation, he said. And then I told him, look here, you have more money than you can come. You have no children. Your wife is an alcoholic. When you die, and reincarnate, you are not going to inherit all this money. You will have to start all over again from a scratch. <laughs> ah, there is a point. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about. Yeah, reincarnation, I want the money. <laughs> what? what good is this? Something to think about. What good is all this money? <laughs> now, apart from joking, what do you think will reincarnate? Two o'clock, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But what, what happens to you when you see a beautiful sunset? I never look at the beautiful sunset. If you are there standing, probably I will look at your shoes then. <laughs> You know why? The eyes are focused on that color, you see. It does not know that it is red. Anything, there must be something in the red color. So it is demanding, you see. You don't bother about how beautiful the sunset is. Maybe you look at it in the next frame, you see, you are drawn. Anything that is moving there, the wagging of a dog's tail is more demanding than that horrible sunset, you see. <laughs> We leave it to the poets to write some poetic nonsense about the sunrise and sunset. <laughs> you have come all the way to listen to this crap. That's good. It's wonderful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're quite lively. Quite lively. Quite lively. <laughs> because it's the last one. The last one. The, <laughs> the last subject. The first book was the last book. <laughs> We sent this <laughs> Don't listen. Don't listen. They want it. <laughs> Please don't. I'll be in trouble. I don't care. Is there anything to science saying, uh, for instance, when I, when I interpret never dying, I see it in a scientific sense, which is to say that the things that we're made up of, the important stuff, goes on. You see, this body is immortal. Goes on and on. The, There's no beginning, it has no end. You see, this is useful. Your ideas, no use no. for nature. Your God, your inventions, no use for nature. The nature is interested in this body because the nature can re is, uh, reshuffle the atoms. It has done it through. Recycle the atoms and use it to maintain the balance of energy in this universe. That's all it is interested in. See? So the, there is any need for... Uh, Balancing the energy in the universe, thousands and thousands of people will die. It sounds like an argument for quantum mechanics or something. I don't know. <laughs> True. Yeah. 
Yes, one earthquake. You see, it is no comfort for those who have lost their lives or the lives of dear and dear ones. The shifting, this earth is taking place. And there is a demand for a new equilibrium. Hmm? Same is the case with the, your hurricane, Hurricane Hugo, you see. So we really don't know. There was some fellow, you see, who was on the television, I was very much interested in what he said. He flew almost into the eye of this hurricane several times, but he did not um, enter the eye of the hurricane. That would have been disastrous. He said, see, it is really a thing of beauty, he said. Really extraordinarily beautiful thing that is going on there, but when it hits a place like uh, <laughs> North Carolina, uh, my God. Destroys life and property. Is you, that, know? you know, sometimes I think now they are saying there, the that the Helen, you know, Helen there, uh, that volcanic eruption there near Seattle. Mount they have Mount new, uh, Mount Helen, they have new forms of life there. Kind of. We really don't know. We really don't know. Huh? So, this body, the disintegration of uh, the body into its constituent elements. Hmm? So it's no consolation, comfort to the ideas you have, you see. The demand for permanence does not exist because there is no such thing as permanence at all. We are not going to succeed. The demand for permanent happiness, the demand for permanent pleasure does not exist. Even the idea of change is born out change of Change is born out of that, you see. It is interested only, it has invented the change knowing very well that there is no uh, unchangeable thing That's at all. That's exactly all. Right. Change doesn't exist either. At, at all, all, you see. It doesn't exist. So there is no change either. Thought invents the thoughtless. The time invents the timeless. Yeah. Knowing very well that there is no such thing as timeless, no such thing as thoughtless. Wanting to be in a thoughtless state uh, is a fantasy. I know many people who come and tell me I was in a thoughtless state. You are joking. How can you say that you were in a thoughtless state? Thought was very much there. I live in a state of unknown. You know, what the hell are you talking about? How can you say anything about the unknown? You know? <laughs> that Ramdas, uh, Albert, uh, Richard Albert. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my God, you say unknown and then you just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you are relentlessly attacking uh, everything, sir. <laughs> then... Did he leave? Did you chase him away or did he stick around? For no, the he stayed around afterwards. I went away, see. <laughs> <laughs> you see, at least, you know, he, he was open, open and got to go Honest. Honest to admit that, you see. Nothing was a, working that he was saying. That's a living for him. By all means, what do I care? As long as it's a living. Does he still speak at college? Yes, yes. So, yeah. Well, Be Here Now is still a book that you can find on every hippie's yes. shelf. Except Yuppie's shelf. Yuppie's now. Now hippies are reading that book. Huh? Yuppie's? Yeah. yeah. Except he's. Everybody wants <laughs> permanent happiness. Huh? Everybody wants permanent happiness. Permanent happiness. You see, you don't have to uh, <coughs> bother about enlightenment. You see. Cab driver there wants permanent happiness. That's all. Everybody there in this world, anywhere in the world, whether he's a communist or a religious man, the religions have invented this permanent happiness, eternal happiness, eternal bliss. Hmm? And we fall for that. You mean that it doesn't exist? What do you think? That, is there any happiness here? What do you think? Place? I haven't found much. But and yet you are living in hope. One day you will be permanently mm -hmm. and sure. die in hope. Looking for it. And die in hope. Looking, looking, looking. Little happiness. Just tiny beanie bit. Yes. And you want people to People out there entertaining themselves with endless junk. You haven't succeeded. No. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Not attempts. Not a chance. Not a pop from you. You ain't got it. It's such a pop from you. All right, forget it. Story to that is. Eugene's favorite story. Eugene remembers these. Become very handy for me. 
Maybe their tree was saved. They all went to the church and they all died. Everybody has their own database. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. a little unique. <laughs> <laughs> all the religious ones died. <laughs> Get that shit. That's not a problem. It's a good joke. No, no, no. no okay. Right. Right. Don't record it. Yes, Don't record And it. one fellow said, I wish I were a lesbian. He said, <laughs> <laughs> High points of late night programming that you get to watch. Either. No, not late night. It was it's, it's a prime time. Oh, that's prime time. Uh, if you have yeah. to fit him into the value system. Sure, but why is it? Is it a big question as such? You know, the culture wants to shape. The way we are going, we are heading towards. I, I, I don't know to a disaster. There's nothing that we can do unless we realize the fact that my survival depends upon the survival of my neighbor. You see, not love thy neighbor as thyself, or brotherhood, or cooperation and all that. Just the way these cells are functioning. The survival of one cell depends upon the survival of the cell that is next to it. Mm -hmm. But not, you have to cooperate with your neighbors, you see, because you have to love your neighbor. You know, a, a, some type of person that won't lead to more destruction. Not you know what I mean? That's, that's right, because any time, any attempt we make, to have a, a cultural ideal that leads to more destruction. So, Sir, if we don't, so is there any kind of person we can No, if, if we don't destroy ourselves, okay. when the nature needs, you see, these atoms. We just up, take them anyway. They're taking some, something, you see, to maintain the balance of energy yeah. in this universe. We will all be wiped out. Yeah. You know? So, so, so no, the whole point no of trying to do that. It is yeah. no consolation to those who have lost their near and dear ones, their properties, yeah. you may not bother about this marina, but others, you see, they are in the, near the epicenter. Mm -hmm. And Watsonville, so many people have lost everything right, there. Right. But uh, this shifting, you see, may be necessary, you see, for, the, for establishing a new equilibrium you see, on this planet, we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't know. So, you see, whether it is a few hundred or few thousand, you see, um, this, when these atoms are needed somewhere, you, see, you don't count. We are not created for any purpose, grander purpose than any other species on this planet. So, we should just relax, stop trying to make any kind of great ideal or, or goal in terms of, you know, moral person or successful person. Because we have to face it that you, there's, you there's see, other factors that in life goal, that's much that stronger. That goal, that model, you see, that value system which yeah. you have created is the cause of your suffering. Yeah. You are not able to fit into that value system. And that's the only thing that, that would make us stop That is why it. there is a suffering, there is misery. So you live in hope that one day you will succeed in fitting yourself. But uh, we have to experience that as our suffering. In other, words, you. in other words, if I don't experience that, you say it's my suffering, but if I don't experience that... You do. But I don't, do. well, I don't know I'm experiencing it. Why you are suffering. looking for answers to that problem? Yeah. Why do you go to a holy man? Why do you go to a therapist? Why do you yeah. go to somebody else? Because, because I what I think I'm experiencing... Is John, you see, John Lee Wright, what is his name? Yeah, Inright. Inright, yeah. John Inright, one of the top yeah. psychologists. He holds seminars. He educates 50,000 people. 50,000 people. Marin, 50, Marin, 50, Marin, people. He's in yeah, trouble. This fellow was here. Are you? you know? No, I, I, I just heard his And name. so, what good is that? You see, yeah. you know, he, he may have made money, a lot of money. You see, like Ramadas is saying, that's my living. I want you to accept that fact yeah. that what there is a market for that, you are doing that for, you know, to make a living. It's exactly the way you are dealing with that fire there. Right, you it know, is that's not what I'm saying. There's a difference. So, all these jokers are providing you with gloves. Yeah. Fireproof gloves, right, and you and still saying, want to pray with right, it. Say, hey, you can really it go is not a fire, burden. Wear this if, if it yeah. is a burden, you that's just drop it. Right. You see, that's all. You don't even have to think. That's why when I ask those people, what do you want? They, they don't say anything. You see, they just begin, what do I want? I want 100 different things. It's a simple answer, what you want. Yeah. You know? There's no need for you to think. It's wanting and thinking go together. That's all that I'm saying. Hmm?